Good day everyone. It was sunny this morning but it's a bit windier today and there's a kite surfer out so I'm hoping that he goes by as I'm filming my intro today. I'm just gonna have a cup of my afternoon tea or sip I should say. I won't drink the entire cup and make you watch it but I thought uh, for today I had filmed the upstairs of uh, Old King's Cottage the other day and the footage isn't actually that great. I think I want to do another filming of the whole house and of course I'm going to do another filming once I have the house decorated for Christmas. That goes without saying. But I probably will do another filming of just the house in general. But I thought, you know what, I'm still going to share this for uh, Thursday's vlog just because I took the footage and I might as well. You do have to excuse the fact that the house, don't forget, has been pretty much shut up all summer, so there'll be plenty of cobwebs. <laughs> and it's also decorated more for uh, a rental, so it's not uh, decorated as the way it would have been when we lived there with more, uh, more colonial style antiques, but I just kind of wanted to show the uh, tiny little upstairs and how there were nice built-ins and things. Um, it is uh, very small, it's basically just a half floor because it is in the eaves or the attics of the house, but I figure why not share it? And uh, well, let's get to it then. So this is my 300 year old colonial cottage. It is a half cape on Cape Cod. And I will share in the end of this video, um, another video I made showing off the first floor of this cottage a little bit more in detail. However, as we go in, I will give another quick little um, roundabout tour of the first floor. But today we're going to be focusing on the tiny upstairs, which is really uh, sort of a half floor. So let's go in and I will share it with you. Starting in the old kitchen. Now the house was built in 1718, but this kitchen would have been added in the 1800s and then it was updated in the 1950s. And this is an old 1950 General Electric, which still works. And these open cabinets just have a, a sort of secondary dishes because I have been using this as a summer rental, so I don't have my best things out. And this old window here is an interior window now. It used to be on the outside of the house, but in the 50s, a bedroom was added next door. And so it's nice to have that light uh, from the kitchen go in, but it does have opaque windows, so it's still private. And then as we he head in here, this is the... Uh, colonial uh, bit of the house, the 1718, and this would have been the keeping room or what they would have used basically as their kitchen in 1700. And this open fireplace, one of two in this home, unfortunately does not work. It still has the old cooking arm though, and this is how they would have prepared their food over an open fire and there would have been a bread oven as well um, in the little cabinet behind. And then looking this way, that is my husband's old uh, grand piano he learned on as a child. And my favorite part of this cottage is the fact that it is post and beam. So it is not built with nails, but all these beams are fitted together and large posts or large um, wooden pegs are driven through to hold it together. And that central beam is about probably about 12 inches. So the uh, this is basically the first floor, the dining room, the bedroom, and this is the basic living room, sitting room. And that uh, fireplace there does work because we installed a Franklin stove, which is a type of wood stove that you can both burn wood or coal in, and we've burned both in. And you, I have to apologize for the decor because, again, all, a lot of our more colonial style things were put in storage because we do rent this out to, in order to keep the house uh, as a summer rental. However, that did not happen this year. So now if we head into the little front hall and looking back into the sitting room, this is the little door we walked in from the front. And then we go up the stairs and the beams up here, unfortunately, are painted. One day I'd like to strip them. This is an old pastel of mine. I have some of my old artwork sort of dotted around just to kind of fill up spaces. Now this wall here with the wood paneling on the side is a, a division that I personally put in. But let's look back down the hall and down into the hallway we just came up with the very steep stairs and then it's very open right here and then I want to share this bit these are the old nails when the first floor or the ground floor uh, old pumpkin pine floors were raised we kept samples of all the old nails that were used that were forged in the 1700s and then when those floors were put, put, put back down uh, locally made nails that are still made in the old way from a company called Tremont Nail that uh, used to make them off Cape were used to put the old floors back down on the first floor. Then just some random artwork of mine. And then so if you're looking back as you come up you can see this big white sort of stuccoed bit is the chimney breast or the chimney piece that comes through here. And uh, then if you're looking this way, this used to just be two rooms. It was the back room and then this room where I put the wall in used to just be one open room. But I wanted to have a another bedroom and a hallway. 
Oh, here is a print. Uh, I got that for my birthday a few years back of Woodcocks. So this wall here was built up against the chimney, which sweeps out. And then on the back of the chimney, I built a bookcase on this side, which is the hallway side. And then that bookcase forms the back of a closet on the side in this little twin bedroom, which came about. And you can see there are more built-ins along this wall here, which unfortunately are mainly blocked by the twin beds. But as we needed more sleeping space for guests, it's what we had to do. And then as you come around this way, you can see there is there are Velexes in the ceiling on this side, which lets more light in. But I just love having the interior window inside. And again, this wall I just built myself, and I am not a carpenter. So you'll see the wood pieces on there, the lath work, which I wanted to look like an old wall, is really mainly because I'm so bad at drywall that my seams are never quite right. So I find that putting wood over the seams helps to make it look old and also cover my own mistakes. And... Uh, but I still think that the interior window works. It lets light through and yet you can sh close the curtains for privacy. And I love this old lamp that, or this old wall light, which we had installed. It was an old gas lamp and it has tape on it because I have to have the electrician look at it. Here are more of the built-ins, which on both sides of the upstairs wall are the built-ins, which has the drawers on either side and then a cabinet in the center. Now, if we enter into basically what is considered the master bedroom in this house, just because it's basically the largest room, I do, I have fit a king size bed in it because again, I'd like to have a king size bed for guests. Here are more of the built-ins. You have three drawers on either side with a very deep central cabinet in the middle. Now, the sad bit of our walls in this room is this room used to have the most dar darling pinkishy colored colonial style wallpaper that was actually Victorian, but it was colonial inspired. And when we rented it out one year, the guest, or the, not the guest, but the roommate, or the tenant, painted over the wallpaper without asking. And of course, there's nothing I could do. So here are some Audubon prints. So I would love one day to uh, get the wallpaper recreated, or probably design my own version of a wallpaper and re-wallpaper this room. I also would love to take out all the old popcorn ceilings here. And like you can see, this beam that runs through here is like the old beams down below, which I would love to strip back to wood. Underneath this popcorn ceiling is more lovely wood, and I'd like to have that exposed. Oh, and here's why I love an interior window. See how you can just get that little moment where you glimpse through the hallway window into the sweet little spindle bed in the twin room? I just think that it's just a great addition. It lets the light through, and it adds an architectural feature. And I, I built the wall, so I figure why not add it? Another view of my... Uh, hand-tinted Victorian print of Woodcocks that my husband gave me for my birthday. And we ha we do have some old things in here, like that is an old kerosene lamp that was fitted to become an electric lamp. And uh, we used to have the old 12 over 12 antique Victorian windows in, but we just replaced them this year with recreated antique style windows. Unfortunately, we spent a lot on it and then we weren't able to rent out this year. But thus is life in owning property in 2020. <laughs> and then we come back down the stairs into the very tiny little front hall and then we come back out into the sitting room or living room. And this that is basically the house. The house is quite small, but I think overall it's laid out very well. And it means a lot to me, this house. Uh, I've had my parents live in it. We've had many happy Christmases. So it's just a special place. And uh, if we aren't able to rent it out any longer, I would like to try to do something with it. So thank you for joining me and let's finish off this video. So no walk today. I just haven't the time to share it mainly. But if you can see, it's a fog-bound morning. And I just thought to tag on to the end of today's video, I would come out because I want you to hear in the distant the sound of the ship coming in or the boat coming in. I don't know if you can make it out. But can you hear it in the distance? I can see it now that I've come closer but I was sitting and editing and I could hear the birds and the fog was so dense I couldn't see the sea as I usually do when I'm editing. And then I heard the ship. I hope you can see it or hear it. But I'm still convinced in the fog that the sound has clarity that it does not have when the sun beats out. I heard that boat in the stillness chugging along. I looked out, there was no sea to see because of the fog being so dense. 
And I heard our go here. Having his breakfast. Dropping his shellfish. And then I heard the chug. Chug, distant thunder rumble of the boat. And I knew a fisherman was coming in, though I couldn't see him until just now when I came down with the camera to show you. Okay, this is our stand-in walk, a foggy day. Now, I probably will be able to get a foggy walk for possibly Tuesday's video, we'll see. But let's end with the beauty of the dew on the bittersweet. And do you see why I have such a love-hate relationship with this plant? <laughs> Come spring, you won't want to hear the utterances coming from me, bundled up with loppers and secateurs and gloves up to my elbows. But just now, right now, I'm in love with the foul little vine. See how it catches the light. And in the fog like this, on an autumnal morning, I can almost, almost forgive her, her vining, choking, strangling ways, almost. But you'll see in spring videos that love will quickly turn to hate. But such is nature. Oh, there goes a little flock of starlings just flew over. All right. Well, I will tack this on to today's video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tiny little tour. Again, I have to get better with my camera use, but I just wanted to share the upstairs of the cottage. And uh, more kite surfers and wind surfers were out today. I was hoping they'd be out while I was filming my uh, clothes here, but I think I've shared them in the past. Uh, oh, there goes a bird diving. It's funny how quickly the weather changes here. It was still and sunny this morning and now the wind is coming in and I believe we're supposed to get a storm this evening and into tomorrow. So we may get uh, some big waves this evening. So, all right, well, thank you for joining me today and I will see you uh, later today on Lalan Chats and I will see you Sunday on my premiere and on Lalan's premiere and Dan's premiere. And uh, just again, want to say thank you to everyone. I really, I just love our community. I think we're such a happy, jolly, crew on YouTube and I always look forward to seeing all of you so until I see you remember stay creative cheers